You probably saw Uniqlo before on Novak Djokovic or Roger Federer, but did you know that its founder, Tadashi Inai, is Japan's richest man with a net worth of $17.8 billion? Or that the day the brand opened its store in Seoul 2001, it netted $1.16 million of sales in a single day? Although Uniqlo was originally founded in 1949 in Japan as a textile manufacturer, the first Uniqlo store opened its doors in June 1984, proving the success of the SPA manufacturer retail model controlling the entire process from product planning, production, distribution, and marketing. Uniqlo enjoyed superb growth by providing high-quality casual wear at remarkably affordable prices for men, women, and kids. Many of you would have heard about this brand just seconds ago, but what is the secret behind this brand's sharp rise? Despite high competition from brands like Zara, H&M, Gap, Forever 21, and many more, Uniqlo has managed to secure a large portion of the competitive fast fashion retailer sector in no time. Tadashi Inai is the business's Japanese creator of Uniqlo. His brand was renamed from its former name, Unique Clothing. His famous saying echoes in the works of his business. Uniqlo's unwavering commitment to innovation and organizational culture are two of the company's primary brand success drivers. This essence is reflected in Tadashi Yanai's 23 management principles, which are instilled in every Uniqlo employee. These ideals are founded on putting the customer first, giving back to society, and being self-disruptive. But first, let's dive into the history of this brand and Tadashi. In 1992, Tadashi Inai bought his father's 22-store men's tailoring business, Agori Shoji, in Ube Yamaguchi. Shortly after taking over as president of the company in 1984, he opened a new store in Hiroshima called Unique Clothing Warehouse, which was later shortened to Uniqlo. This man's dedication has pushed the brand to global recognition from scratch. His advancement is widely regarded as the driving force behind the company's rapid growth. Tadashi and I saw enormous potential for Japan's casual wear market after visiting Europe and the United States, where he discovered large casual apparel chains such as Benetton and Gap, and set goals to transition the family's business strategy from suiting to casual clothing, purchasing fashion goods in bulk at low cost. This store believes in maintaining control over its entire supply chain. This is commonly referred to as a specialty store retailer of private label apparel, abbreviated as SPA. They control the entire process, from production planning to production, distribution, and marketing. So they basically run the show. One would be surprised to know that Uniqlo is a company that believes in being unrecognizable, and this has been a key part of Uniqlo's success. Instead of chasing fleeting fashion trends, Uniqlo focuses its time and energy on basic and bland apparel themes and fashion ideas that go with everything and are less likely to go out of style. In fact, their boring and counterintuitive history page is no coincidence, but a strategy to blend in. They never wanted to stand out by showing off their bases and sources of development. Uniqlo wanted to climb the ladder of success like a next-door fashion brand without attracting more attention than needed. One of the most significant issues, however, was consumer perception of the brand. It was perceived as a bargain shop selling low-quality clothing to the suburbs. This impression was drastically altered in 2004 when the company issued the Global Quality Declaration, pledging to stop producing low-cost, low-quality clothing. Uniqlo has since become well known for its high-quality fleece jackets. The brand's image went from cheap and low-quality to cheap and high-quality in an instant. Uniqlo, a wholly-owned subsidiary of Fast Retailing Company Limited, is well known for providing high-quality private-label casual wear at reasonable prices. As of September 2019, the brand had expanded to over 2,250 outlets in 25 countries across Asia, Europe, and the United States in just 22 years. It's Asia's largest clothing retailer with over 800 stores in Japan and 99 stores in Tokyo alone. Fast retailing is worth more than 49.2 billion US dollars and employs over 56,000 people worldwide. For the fiscal year ending 2021, fast retailing had revenues of 22 billion US dollars and a profit of 2.5 billion US dollars. Japan accounted for 38% of total sales, with one out of every four Japanese owning a Uniqlo down jacket. Fast retailing has grown at an incredible rate in the last five years, and its optimism is reflected in its sales forecast of 9.5% growth in FY 2022. 
Uniqlo has a brand worth of 9.2 billion US dollars, ranking 84th on Forbes' list of the world's most valuable brands. Much of this can be attributed to the innovative approach of its founder and customer-centric culture. Successful brands must support organizational and operational structures that make it easier to implement brand deliverable strategies. On the one hand, Uniqlo has effectively defined its brand promise, high quality, performance enhanced, universal, basic casual clothing at a reasonable price. On the other hand, in order to fulfill its brand promise, it has also established a solid delivery system. The company's product planning, design, manufacturing, and distribution capabilities are entirely in-house, allowing it to stay close to consumer demands based on what customers buy in their stores while saving money on overproduction or unnecessary overheads. Stocks can be updated in a matter of weeks or restocked in a matter of days. Uniqlo CEO Tadashi Yanai is fond of saying Uniqlo is not a fashion company, it's a technological firm. Indeed, the brand's approach to clothing production is more akin to the iterative approach to product development championed by the technology sector than to the fast fashion retail industry's cyclical, trend-driven rhythm. While leading competitor Zara built the world's largest apparel business by responding quickly to fast-changing fashion trends, getting items from factory to store in about two weeks, Uniqlo takes the opposite approach, planning the production of wardrobe essentials up to a year in advance. Tadashi Anai was ranked number 54 on the 2019 Harvard Business Review list of the world's best performing CEOs. He has produced a 700% shareholder return since 2000, and Uniqlo's market value has increased by 39 billion US dollars. He is widely credited with Uniqlo's phenomenal success and exponential growth over the last 36 years, owing to his creation of a strong business culture centered on collaboration and customer experience. The flat organizational structure of Uniqlo reflects the company's emphasis on collaboration, with employees encouraged to make suggestions. The company's beliefs and goals are immediately translated into processes and metrics that are powerfully demonstrated by employees worldwide. According to Peter Drucker, every corporation's only two functions are innovation and marketing. Uniqlo understands this. The company is well known for its fabric innovations. The company also enjoys Japanese textile gurus known as Takumi, who regularly collaborate with companies in China and Japan to design new high-tech textiles for Uniqlo. One of Uniqlo's distinguishing technologies is heat tech, a fabric developed in collaboration with Torre Industries. It converts moisture into heat and has air pockets in the fabric to keep the heat in. Because the heat tech fabric is thin and comfortable, the company has been able to create fashionable designs that are significantly different from the traditional warming apparel market. Uniqlo has catered to three categories, men, women, and children, and has subscribed to the five-point subcategorization. Uniqlo's outwear collection includes jackets and coats in various styles and materials, hoodies and parkas for various weather conditions and events, and the renowned ultralight down jacket, which is exceptionally thin, light, and comfortable while still providing adequate insulation and warmth. Top's category for women includes a variety of functional and comfortable dresses, skirts, wrinkle-resistant blouses, t-shirts, and UT. Sweaters and cardigans are also available in UV cut fabric or cotton cashmere. It has formal and casual shirts for men in various sizes, as well as t-shirts, UT, sweaters, and cardigans, and flannel. Its polo t-shirts are made of two different materials, Airism and Dry-X Extra Breathable Mesh in a seamless construction. In keeping with the brand's goal of promoting diversity, Uniqlo provides free tailoring services for trousers that cost more than $20. Uniqlo's innerwear is designed with comfort in mind. The brand gets its denim from the same factory as Levi's in Hiroshima. Customers go through typical phrases like, did you find what you're looking for, from store associates twice as a rule. In 2012, Uniqlo hacked Pinterest by creating 100 accounts and simultaneously posting to all of them, which turned people's dashboards into one continuous scrolling ad for the brand. Uniqlo has also collaborated with several brands such as Plus J by Jill Sander in 2009, The Tea Down of Theory in 2012, Sanrio for the Hello Kitty themed campaign to spread awareness of cervical cancer, UT from Nego in 2013, Uniqlo U by Christophe Lemaire, and Uniqlo X Marimeco in 2020. 
Currently, Uniqlo is facing competition challenges from Spain's Zara and Sweden's H&M. Uniqlo must focus on delivering a more quality-oriented product instead of cheap pricing. It must focus on creating a faster e-commerce delivery system and cater to the demands of all age groups. The battle for fashion dominance is on. Who do you think will win? Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and drop a comment. I'll see you guys in the next one.